The 60s generation, rave goers, and college kids alike are going to love this geeky science today. A new report in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences suggests that the key ingredient in magic mushrooms, psilocybin, may be the perfect aid for certain mental disorders. Early research has shown that psilocybin is helpful for terminally ill cancer patients dealing with anxiety and possibly people with severe forms of depression. Essentially, psilocybin targets both the medial prefrontal cortex and the anterior cingulate cortex regions of the brain. The former determines how a person thinks, feels, and behaves. Psilocybin alters this activity in the brain, thereby opening up a person's personality and thoughts. And in the, interior, in the anterior cingulate cortex region, psilocybin decreases the amount of activity that's occurring, therefore decreasing activities associated with depression. Not only that, this research shows the positive effects from shrooms last for as long as 25 years. The possibility that magic mushrooms can help with neurological problems is really nothing new, however. Timothy Leary, a famous American psychologist, was a strong advocate for the use of psych psychedelic drugs for the treatment of mental disorders from the 1960s until his death in 1996. Leary, who first took psilocybin in 1960, argued that substances like LSD and psilocybin, when used in a controlled setting at proper dosages and under the guidance of an experienced therapist, was beneficial in treating mental disorders from depression to addiction in ways that traditional therapy had failed. Despite Leary's research and these new findings showing magic mushrooms are promising in treating depression and anxiety, don't hold your breath waiting for them to become available from your local pharmacy. It's because there's way too much money to be made promoting other drugs that alter our consciousness, like al alcohol, caffeine, and tobacco, and they all have lobbyists. Most Americans are familiar with two drugs which change consciousness. Drugs which put us into a stupor, uh, drugs which wake us up. Almost every American uses one of these two. We use uh, opiates or tranquilizers or alcohol to put us into a nice cozy stupor. Or we use drugs like pep pills or even coffee to wake us up. But there are many other levels of consciousness, many other levels of awareness which can be triggered off by chemicals. I am old, older than the thought in your species, which is itself fifty times older than your history. Though I have been on earth for ages, I am from the stars. My home is no one planet, for many worlds scattered through the shining disk of the galaxy have conditions which allow my spores an opportunity for life. The mushroom which you see is the part of my body given to sex thrills and sunbathing. My true body is a fine network of fibers growing through the soil. These networks may cover acres and may have far more connections than the number in a human brain. My mycelial network is nearly immortal. Only the sudden toxification of a plant or the explosion of its parent star can wipe me out. By means impossible to explain because of certain misconceptions in your model of reality, all my mycelial networks in the galaxy are in hyperlight communication across space and time. The mycelial body is as fragile as a spider's web. But the collective hypermind and memory is a vast historical archive of the career of evolving intelligence on many worlds in our spiral star swarm. Space, you see, is a vast ocean to those hardy life forms that have the ability to reproduce from spores, for spores are covered with the hardest organic substance known. 
Across the eons of time and space drift many spore-bearing life forms in suspended animation for millions of years until contact is made with a suitable environment. Few such species are minded. Only myself and my recently evolved near relatives have achieved the hyper-communication mode and memory capacity that makes us leading members of the community of galactic intelligence. How the hyper-communication mode operates is a secret that will not be given lightly to humanity, but the means should be obvious. It is the occurrence of psilocybin and psilocin in the biosynthetic pathways of my living body that opens for me and my symbiosis the vision screens to many worlds. You as an individual and mankind as a species are on the brink of the formation of a symbiotic relationship with my genetic material that will eventually carry humanity and Earth into the galactic mainstream of the higher civilization. Within my memory is the knowledge of hyperlight drive ships and how to build them. I will trade this knowledge for a free ticket to two new worlds around suns less forsaken and near galaxy center. To secure an eternal existence down the long river of cosmic time, I again and again offer this agreement to higher beings and thereby have spread throughout the galaxy over the long millennia. A mycelial network has no organs to move the world, no hands. But higher animals with manipulative abilities can become partners with the star knowledge within me, and if they act in good faith, return both themselves and their humble mushroom teacher to the million worlds all citizens of our star swarm are heir to. Overnight, very whitely, discreetly, very quietly, our toes, our noses, take hold on the loam, acquire the air. Nobody sees us, stops us, betrays us. The small grains make room. Soft fists insist on heaving the needles, the leafy bedding, 
even the paving. Our hammers, our rams, earless and eyeless, perfectly voiceless, widen the crannies, shoulder through holes. We diet on water, on crumbs of shadow, bland-mannered, asking little or nothing. So many of us, so many of us. We are shells, we are tables, we are meek, we are edible, nudges and shovers in spite of ourselves, our kind multiplies. We shall by morning inherit the earth, our foot's in the door. Take a look around There's a world that's up there 